So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Joanne and Rich. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much for coming. Uh, we're, we're very excited to be here today and to share with you one of our programs that we love doing. So uh, I'll just say slide then. So first of all, there was a question about how do you find a partner with ICAPS? And for us, we have a very, very large network of partnerships, both in literacy and uh, in workplace. So people often refer other uh, non-for-profits to us. And then we, on our side, we do a lot of outreach. So we've been working with different aldermen, state representatives, because if we can go to a community and work in the community where people don't have to, to run around and take transportation to get to us, it makes it easier for the people we're trying to serve. Uh, we work with different social agencies, religious organizations. Right now, we're working on some exciting new programs in uh, different uh, churches and temples around Chicago. We've worked in schools, both private and Chicago, uh, Chicago public schools. And we work both with for-profit and non-profit organizations. So anyone who needs our help, we're there. And that's the message we, we try to get out. Slide, please. So we're gonna talk to you about our very first ICAPS program, which is UCHI. It's the Unite Here Chicago Hospitality Institute. And this is really exciting. So just hang in there for a minute. Uh, slide. We have, uh, we were, I love this word, I capable. I, I think that was Andrew who made it up. Is that right? Or Mike, something. The I capable, Walt Schoenfuss from oh, okay. Tech coined that phrase. Yeah. So I like the idea. What could be possible partnership mm -hmm. with ICAP? So we're working with another culinary institute that we've been working with for three or four years now. Uh, doing digital literacy, and we're trying to work that into an ICAP program as well. Slide, and this is UCHI, Unite Here Chicago Hospitality Institute. Here are some of our students in our class. Uh, guess what they do? If you said training to be chefs, you're right. How did you know? And you can see this was picture was actually from our first cohort, uh, which was the organization's second cohort, and we've been with them ever since. Uh, they have masks on. Today, they don't have to wear them anymore. Slide, please. So this is an amazing apprenticeship program. It's an eight-week program, and then they have a thousand hours in, uh, in a, in a high-end kitchen, they're training to be chef de partie. So that's their, their bottom line career, which all, actually starts them at a really nice salary. I think it's like around $24 an hour or something like that. And UCHI is the first and it's the only Department of Labor registered culinary apprenticeship. So we are so proud to work with them because they do amazing work. Slide, please. They target unemployed people, underemployed people, and then people who want to improve their culinary techniques. So you have a mix in the classes of people who already have some skills, maybe they've already worked in restaurants, and then people who just love cooking or, and people who love food. And maybe they've been cooking for their families for years. So. The, the common denominator among all those people are they, they love food. Otherwise, you know, you're not gonna have a, a fun life in a kitchen if, unless you love food. Uh, they target immigrants and then they target black and brown women. So it's a really nice mix of people. And to do their program, it takes a village. It's not just Yuchi alone. Uh, with them, we have, 50 partnerships, more than 50 with 
high-end restaurants, hotel kitchens, they are not training for McDonald's. They're training for the Hilton. They're training for the top restaurants and kitchens in Chicago. They work with uh, the union employers and Unite One Local Hospitality Union. And then the, the other big partner, it, aside from us, is uh, Hire 360, which helps them get jobs. Slide, please. Uh, they celebrated in April 22, and we were able to celebrate with them. We are very proud. This is their first year of operation. And I'm sorry that it's a little bit small on the slides, but the big points are their placement rate as of one year ago was 90, April 2022 was 98%. And I think that has not changed. And at that time, they'd already done 6,177 hours of on-the-job training. So now we're six months later, so you can multiply that by half. There, It's just amazing program. People come, it's tough, but they stay because they know they're gonna get good jobs in the end and have a good career. Slide, please. So we were uh, referred to them or they were referred to us back in July, 2021. So they had just started, as I said, in April and they were on their second cohort. And they realized the executive director, Cheryl Morris is a wonderful woman. And she, she realized that some of their, their students couldn't read, some had trouble with English and some had trouble with math for, the, for culinary arts very specifically. For example, how to change a recipe for 63 people into you know, 1,000 people. How do you do that math? So we started with a pilot program because we wanted to get to know um, Uchi better, the students better, and their needs better. And then after that, we, we put together a curriculum that we've been working on with them for all the cohorts. Uh, slide, please. So that, that curriculum, we call it extra seasoning. Don't you love that name? You know, little extra salt and pepper. And this fulfills the ICAPS requirements. So it has, this course has culinary math, applied math. Uh, we teach them about some things about nutrition. We go over it, we read about it because they learn it, but they have a huge, huge, thick, uh, book that they receive. And sometimes it's hard to get through. Sometimes they don't understand everything. We go through all the French cooking terms for culinary, uh, the culinary arts. And I'm sure that everybody here knows a few, but there are so many and you have to be able to understand them. And then we talk about career exploration with them. So what can they do with their new skills? And uh, it, we have an amazing teacher who just has a very high rate of success with them. Everybody loves him. So that it's just perfect. And next slide, please. Um, so in terms of secondary services that Literacy Chicago can offer to UCHI is ESL. So this is during their program and then after. Some of the, the students stay on with us because they want to become a citizen. And it's, you know, that's kind of tough. We, we help them get through their interviews. We can give them one-on-one -on -one training. Anyone who wants to get their GED, they, they can stay with us. Some have already, some start when they're in the program, but it's very intensive. So, you know, they can continue with us afterwards. People who need to learn to read, we help them with literacy. And we also offer digital literacy and that may become part of the program going forward because we're always expanding and growing with them, which I think is one of the most exciting things to do with a partner. Um, please, slide please. So, as I'm saying, we're, we're growing forward with Yuchi, and this has been a win-win 
partnership because as they need new things, we're also growing and what we're using and, and creating for them, we can use with other people who have the same needs. So Yuchi is planning more courses in the, all of the hospitality industry. So we're already starting to think about, you know, how are we going to help them with housekeeping, you know, desk, front desk reception, people who work in the hotels, and even going into management roles like food and beverage, catering, event planning. So they know, and we know we are here with them working together going forward. And I like to say growing forward. That's not an error. We're all growing together. Slide, please. So here is a picture of uh, one of the many buffets that we've been invited to and can tell you they learn how to cook. And it's really good. Uh, slide. So advice. If you want to have a successful program, as I said before, you need to have something that's win-win. And to do that, you have to have very open conversations so you know what they expect from you and they know what they have to do on their side. So it all fits together. And then you have to be flexible. Uh, even from one cohort to another, there may be different needs. And so we have you have to be able to say, okay, we're gonna you know do an about face. This cohort already knows that we're gonna switch to what they don't know. And we've been able to do that because we have amazing instructors. And I think one of the most important things is to have a really positive and very open relationship with your partner and the other partners who are working on the same projects. We have an amazing relationship with the, the people at UCHI. We feel like we're in the same family. We're working together. Our goal, our collective goal is to make lives better for people. And when we do that together, it just feels good. We help them, they're happy and we feel good. So when you feel good about your work, then you wanna keep doing it. And we also help as I said before, students who are graduating, you know, you don't just drop those people. You, you're, you have to also be there for them to serve their needs. And the slide, please. The other advice that we would have is when you send as an organization, when you send an instructor in to teach, that instructor has to be briefed ahead of time. So they know who's their audience you know, who are they? What's their background? What are their objectives? And um, my, the slide went back. Can you go forward again? <laughs> right. Something that's really that. important to think about is what are the students' barriers to learning? What are their personal challenges? What are the reasons that they might not be able to show up to a class? And then how can we help them with that? And that's also, you know, a discussion to have this with the instructor, with the partners. We're teaching adults, so we have to adapt to them. It has to be interactive, games, activities. And especially in our classes, for example, they, they go to our class after a day of work in the kitchen. So it has to be high energy. It has to keep them going, keep them engaged. And then if something doesn't work, we learn from it and move on. And this is always this open conversation. Slide please. So to sum up, we, we love what Julia Child says about learning, learn to cook, try new recipes, learn from your mistakes, be fearless and above all have fun. And I, I think any, any training and the, that you do has to be fun and engaging when you're working with adults. Otherwise, as we all know, they either fall asleep or stop coming. So next slide is a slide just asking you if you have any questions for either Rich or for me. Absolutely, and we have time at the end, but we also have a couple minutes now. So if you have a burning question, please go ahead and unmute yourself or throw it in the chat. So I, I saw some things coming in the chat, but I couldn't read them. So I think Brittany was. 
we I think we are good so far. Someone asked if there's a flyer and I had answered that the slides will be available along with the recording. Um, one question just came, what funding sources do you use? So um, this program is part of various grants that we have. So one is an innovation grant. And then I use some funds for an, another grant that we have um, the outside of state funding. It's all grant funded. Are there any other questions? So either I was clear or and you don't have questions or um, you didn't understand anything. Don't know where no, to No, it was very clear <laughs> and wonderful. And honestly, um, if people, to, if you think of a question, you know, as we continue the presentation, we do have time for Q&A at the end as well. So thank you so much. That was wonderful. And I'm going to go ahead and pass it off now to Andrew and George from the Polish American Association. Thank you, everybody. Well, hello, everyone. Thanks for, for uh, jumping on today and, and uh, taking a listen to what we have to say. Uh, we're going to talk for a few minutes as well about uh, our ICAPS program. Um, I'm going to basically focus on here for a few minutes just what our current program is and, and how it works. And then George is going to take us into kind of where we're moving forward and, and how we're how we're looking to to move things in, in the near future. Uh, go ahead, next slide, please, Tara. Now I don't have anything entitled extra seasoning, so I'm already <laughs> starting out uh, uh, behind the eight ball here. So bear with me on that. Um, so our certified nursing assistant training program um, has has been around for for quite some time. Um, I have been on this job for almost a year now. So we have come into a program that has been set up uh, in, a, in a very uh, a very great way. And we're able to come in and kind of evaluate and see how it's see how it's working, make some some changes here and there, and then see how we can expand and grow the program to to help as many people as we can. Um, so Basically, if I were to break this down, we would talk about as if as a client comes in, we have two. There's two general ways that 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 students come in. We can, we have our our bridge class that that students can take. Now, initially, when we started the bridge program um, in 2014. It, uh, it immediately, the students wanted to take the bridge course at the same time with the ICAPS. So we have worked, it, it was worked in, and it's currently still worked in that, that amongst the hours that they are, that they are taking, we have, uh, it's 150 hours. Um, as it says, there's 100 hours of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, of theory and 50 hours of clinical. And then along with that, we have our ESL instructor that goes in uh, to class for a certain number of hours as well, so that we are getting, uh, they're getting all of their ESL uh, work in um, and background on all of the different uh, health care options, different, different directions that they can go. Um, and so so we can, we, we offer the bridge, they can take a bridge program just to kind of introduce themselves to different options, different, different ways in which they could go, or which has been kind of the way it's been, the majority of our students want to take them together. And this allows them to get, get right into to the certified nursing, uh, the nurse assistant training right away. And then we, we, we mix in the ESL and allows them to get through the program and get that, um, you know, the, the credential that they that they want to get by the end of the program. Um, in terms of our partnerships, currently uh, over the years we've worked with many different uh, hospitals, nursing homes, clinics, different places. Um, COVID kind of kind of narrowed that down a bit because we were you know the, the number of places that were that we could have students in because of different regulations, you know, um, different rules that were in place. Um, but we have had fantastic partnerships with, with several long-term partnerships with um, a couple of nursing homes, 
um, where our students go and, and they get their, their clinical uh, practice. Um, again, our, our students, we have a very, a very good track record in terms of, of our students passing the state test, as well as them being placed immediately and getting jobs. Um, and we're, we're very proud of the success that the program has had and the success that our students have after they complete the program. Um, we do have, you know, in terms of the secondary services that we offer, we do have uh, an employment department where we're able to work with them uh, as well to help, help place them, get them in, into jobs. Uh, we do have, um, as we're on the previous slides there, um, you know, we offer ESL classes, citizenship classes in the very near future. We will have, uh, cross our fingers, uh, we'll have the, the GED uh, up and running, uh, which we're very excited about. And, um, yeah, that's kind of how it's kind of how it works here, and uh, yeah, we're we're very proud of, of, of how it works, and we're actually very excited, which is what George didn't talk about, um, about how we can possibly grow some of these partnerships and and provide more options for our students. So I will turn it over to George. Okay, next slide, please. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I mean, before I get into this slide, I you know. Within the CNA program, um, we have thought about sort of um, restructuring as a healthcare program, more generally, of which CNA would be one of the one of the tracks, you know, one of the career pathways on that. But that also to look at like a medical examining and other sort of fields that we could grow that program in. Um, and so that's that's the existing state. The future state, which we're very excited about, in terms of the different ICAPS programs that we're looking at. Um, Part of this was spurred by uh, just for the first year in our history, um, we uh, have been awarded a, a civics IELCE grant, and uh, which obviously spurred our um, our desire to grow our bridge and specifically our ICAPS uh, uh, presence in, in the future. And so, uh, as it stands today, th these are the three different uh, tracks that we're looking at. The first is in uh, IT and in information technology. And uh, there we're um, specifically looking at, uh, on the end of that uh, particular trajectory, at, and this was actually something that uh, uh, Tara and Sarah at um, SIPDC uh, took us off about, but something that uh, through CoAbe and uh, Google, to look at Google as a, part to, uh, a possible partner um, uh, to basically have uh, an IT bridge uh, class with the various different sort of, you know, skills, training, resume building, interviewing skills, and everything else, all the career pathways and practical skills. Uh, but then for those who carried on in IT to look at uh, the, the credential certification program through Google, and to uh, and then they could in in the IT world uh, look at careers in digital marketing, e-commerce, IT support, uh, data analytics, project management, UX design, these sorts of things that Google has an active uh, certification program uh, for. And um, when we get to the next slide, not yet, but I, I want to talk about sort of, you know, the, there's a certain kind of um, interesting hybrid uh, way in which we can work partner with Google, which is sort of both inside and outside at the same time. Uh, the other uh, one, uh, another one that we're looking at is the entrepreneurial ICAPS. And this is one that um, most of our clientele, our existing clientele are uh, adult learners in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. And, I, and a large number of them are small business owners. Um, and they take our ESL classes and our ABE classes, but you know, manage, run their own businesses on the side. But to look at uh, first an entrepreneurial bridge and then um, an ICAPS, um, and specifically uh, an SBDC, a small business development center, um, and our, our vision um, that we're hoping to do down the line is to have the Polish American Association uh, be uh, an officially designated small business development center to have an office in, in our presence here in Chicago to do that. Uh, there's other places, for instance, the, uh, the Puerto Rican Cultural Center, uh, very close to us in Humboldt Park here in Chicago, has this. And, and these SBDCs are um, they're basically coalitions between small business uh, administration the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, DCEO, and then the specific organization, the CBO, in this case, the Puerto Rican Cultural Center, uh, for us, the Polish American Center. But um, this is some, this is an idea that we have where we could give practical training um, uh, and assistance to 
uh, graduates who go uh, or students who go through uh, the entrepreneurial bridge and, and then the ICAPS with us to help them with um, you know, digital marketing, strategic planning, entrepreneurship, basically all things small business, uh, you know, advising and helping them in that regard. Um, you know, things like PPP, right? Um, you know, uh, the production program and, and, and other things which are you know, critical to small businesses that um, just, just like uh, Joanne was talking about before that are specifically tailored for immigrant populations um, uh, as well. The final one, uh, this is a little bit more speculative, but we're very interested in it, is, is something to do with energy, specifically clean energy, renewable energy, um, and energy ICAPs. And so the idea here is to do the bridge class, but then to have um, you know, a clean energy training program with a partner, um, you know, whatever business or industry or organization that would be is still up in the air. But you know, we're, we're very excited. Um, this is the biggest growth area for us as far as we're concerned in, in broader in the education department at the Polish American Association is specifically in, in the bridge and ICAPS world. This is where we really want to go. Um, and looking at the slide, one thing that we thought about is, and I tried to indicate it with those arrows in between at the bridge level is that um, these do not need to be to our understanding, um, you know, distinct bridge mm -hmm. classes that we can stack them. They can be stackable bridge classes that, you know, each of them cover 80% of what's relevant to the other. And then there can be a few sort of specific you know, uh, individually tailored, you know, units for those students uh, that then can go into, you know, so kind of like a, a funnel shape, if you will, but then could go into those different ICAPs. And so this is this is the kind of idea that we have. Uh, last slide, please, Tara. So I, I wrote this and I, these were uh, just intended as as kind of talking points, as discussion points and, and, and food for thought moving forward and specifically tailored to CBOs, which is the purpose of this of this presentation. And in our case, uh, even within the world of CBOs, we're, um, we're on the smaller side in terms of staff and resources. But for smaller CBOs like the Polish American Association, um, the question of, of um, and these are open questions about in-house programs versus outside partnerships. You know, our CNA program is largely in-house. We obviously work with other organizations, but we take them through the entire path um, through the ICAPS itself. And, and the benefits in many regards of having um, uh, of, of the in-house uh, program. In other words, where you do like say the ESL ABE coursework, then you have the bridge classes. And then even within your own organization that you uh, basically run and manage the ICAPS side of things, albeit with you know, working alongside um, other, uh, other institutions and organizations. So um, the mixed hybrid model, this is, this is where the Google thing, as I mentioned ago, is a possibility. Um, I know that um, CoAve had has uh, developed other programs or at least provided guidance where uh, Google can train your instructors who then instruct the students you know, in the bridge and the ICAPS in terms of all those uh, Google uh, certifications and credentials that we were talking about. And this is something we're very much interested in, in doing. Um, for those of us uh, in, the, in the Chicago area, a likely partner is, is the city college system that you know you can we've had conversations with Malcolm X College with Wilbur right, oh, right. Uh, um, and others about potentially forming some partnerships with them and you know like any partnership um, uh, and this is just simply echoing what Joanne said a second ago is that you want it to be a win-win you want it to be this is the best advice in our early stages of, of developing these things is make sure that's a mutually beneficial relationship I think if there's a clear understanding of how does this benefit us but also you know, who's going to want to work with you unless they have a, if you can, you know, pitch to them, you know, um, they understand that this is, you know, whether it's providing them with students and, and, you know, if that's a community college or, you know, that they clearly understand that this is what they're going to sort of, you know, get out of it themselves. Like this is where we've had the most traction, I think, with, mm -hmm. with conversations. Um, ICAPs are exciting for us too, because uh, I wrote internal cohesion. And what I mean is that um, at the Polish American Association, for instance, um, I think if we can get a, several of these ICAPs up and running, it's gonna really kind of let us as an organization and our departments gel in a way that we hadn't experienced previously. So from an administrative side, from a teacher side, the career navigators, the, uh, the employment uh, office, which is uh, downstairs from us, you know, when, when and if we get these ICAPs up and running, it's really gonna, I think, get a level of sort of integration and working as a team that uh, didn't exist previously, perhaps, um, with some other programs. So that's, I think that's a big incentive for uh, developing these ICAPs. Obviously, um, external partnerships, um, you know, networking is important, um, but oftentimes it, for us, networking was usually limited as 
hey, can we set up a table at an event you're holding and pass out some flyers, you know, and, and take our ESL classes and so forth. And, and I think building truly meaningful, sustainable partnerships with other organizations, ICAPS is the way to go. And ICAPS is prescriptive. And what I mean that by that is, on the one hand, you can look at your existing clientele and say, okay, these are the, these are the jobs and these are the industries that they are, are, are concentrating in, and uh, whether that's trucking or they're small business owners and so forth. And you can be reactive in a way, right? And be like, this is what you're doing. Let's develop an ICAPS to, you know, to, to, to help you, um, you know, to help you advance your careers um, or to help you get into that career if this is what you're interested in doing. But the flip side of this is, is to use ICAPS as a sort of um, as, a, as, a, as a beacon, if you will, um, to, to, to be where you want to go, right? And we at the Polish American Association want to you know, really uh, into the future diversify um, the kind of areas uh, that uh, the options that we give our students as well as, um, as, well as um, you know, really, yeah, basically um, respond to the fact that there's a changing demographic of, of those clients that we serve. And so the idea here is to get into IT, to get into uh, entrepreneurship, to get into uh, clean energy, areas that the PAA had never, ever previously sort of explored and looked into, but kind of the mentality of, you know, build it and they will come. And, and, and to, try to, um, to try to build those rather than just waiting for, okay, we've got enough, you know, you know, registered interest here, let's go ahead and do this, but rather actually to be a little bit, to have some foresight and to say, let's do this, it's risk, right? But let's build this. And then, and then they're going to come to us and, you know, um, you know, maybe it's ESL simultaneously with a bridge, but then, you know, get that ICAPS going. So that's, that's the kind of, you know, overall philosophy that we're, you know, that we've approached this for. Um, and yeah, I mean, the, the sky's the limit in terms of, you know, there's obviously limitations of time and resources uh, in terms of how we can build these things, but the, um, you know, we've got the CNA and we're very proud of it and that's been going for a long time now. Um, but uh, the future for us, you know, we're, I'm, we're talking to you today from a perspective of, of you know, uh, a small CBO in Chicago that are interested in, in these various different directions that we could take. So at any rate, that's, that's, uh, that's about it for us from the PAA. Thank you so much. And are you okay with taking a couple of questions that have come in on sure. the chat? Sure. Okay. Um, do you see them or would you prefer me to read those? Uh, I can I can pull them up. Okay. Uh, do any of your partners hire the students as patient techs while they are in classes, then promote them to CNA once they pass their state exam? No, no, that is not that has not been anything that, that we have done. Um, they are we have, as I said before, we have great relationships with the, with the different facilities that our students are in. And many times they are hired after the fact, but as of right now, not until they've received, they've passed the state exam and was and obtained that credential, and then they're then they're taken in, uh, you know, brought in for employment. But many of them use that as a stepping stone, right? For, Correct. For the, you know, we've had uh, uh, graduates in our CNA program that go on to be RNs, you know, at the sort of um, uh, at the end of the at the end of the path there. Do CBOs struggle with having enough personnel to effectively handle everything associated with developing, rolling out, and continuously supporting a new ICAPS offering in a manner that is reflective of the written framework's design? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it, yes, this is. Um, we are, uh, I would say, understaffed in in terms of the vision that we have. So this is a constant struggle. Uh, for the Polish American Association, and I would imagine a number of other CBOs in terms of just having the the uh, the personnel. So, you know, it's it's kind of a balancing act, right? Is you know, um, do you sort of work within your means, or do you sort of aspire to go a little bit beyond where you are currently? You know, make that proposal for that particular grant, right? And then maybe get the funding to to hire that staff member who can then become the the project manager, the you know the the person who can then person, who yes. realize that that vision that you have. But yeah, that's a uh, I don't know if you want to add anything else yeah, to that. No, it's, no, it, yeah. That's yeah, it's it's definitely a continuous struggle. And yeah. we we divide up the responsibility the, the best way that we can. And again, yes, have to, you know, try using the funding that we do have to hire enough, you know, a new person here, a new person there in order to kind of fill the void to get the things that need to be accomplished, accomplished in order to move forward. Yeah, uh, but at any rate, you know, anyone who's worked with a CBO or worked for a CBO obviously knows yeah. you have to be a, a, a jack or a jill of all trades, you know, um, and, and, and in terms of, you know, developing these programs, it just kind of goes with the territory. 
Uh, Mary asks, has anyone else worked with Google in the past? Curious to hear about your experience with them. So we haven't, uh, this is just a, a, a hope of ours. I'm not sure if anyone on this call, they could unmute themselves and share. Uh, but I just, I know about their credential certification program um, and, uh, and that they basically, they have instructors who can uh, teach your instructors who then will then, you know, teach in terms of the bridge and then the ICAPS program itself. That's one model. Or, you know, I think also you could go directly through Google um, and there would be different fees, obviously, or licensing registration fees for, for something like that. But um, we're just getting that off the ground right now. That's our yeah. IT bridge uh, uh, sort of target. We looked at, we considered other things like um, Cisco and um, uh, other HR kind of software um, uh, options. But uh, I think we're going to, we, we've decided to sort of move forward with Google at the moment. How did you find, Tim asked, how did you find an instructor with the proper credentials to teach CNA classes? That, that has been two, one of two ways. Either the connections that we've had the, working with the different, uh, different hospitals in the past, different, different clinics, different nursing homes. Um, we have found um, RNs who would be, who were interested in teaching classes that they, they enjoyed that part of something different and they, they enjoy that aspect of, 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 of teaching the classes um, as well as just simply, you know, you know, putting it out on Indeed and, uh, you know, putting out ads for, we're looking for uh, someone with an RN license who is, who is able to um, teach the classes. And it's, it, it is, uh, I, I would definitely say it's, it's tough at times, especially obviously with everything we've gone through with COVID. Uh, nurses have been extremely busy, and um, it, it has been a little difficult. We've been lucky in that we've had kind of a core group that we've been able to rely on that have been with us for a while. Um, but we have brought in a, a one or two new people in the recent past uh, here, and going forward, as we start to again try to grow things a little bit, we'll be looking to, to try to add some more. But yeah, it's- it's It, it is a constant it's struggle because, you know, particularly with RNs, so that we have, they have to have an RN to be able to teach in the CNA program, but, you know, we're competing against, um, um, you know, RNs who are in a huge amount of desire um, uh, within within the market. And so, you know, offering them a salary, which is at least competitive with, with uh, what they can make as registered nurses themselves. The upside, of course, is they get to work in a, you know, a, Probably less stressful office environment, classroom as opposed to as opposed to a hospital uh, or clinic. Um, Tara, are we okay for time? The questions are pouring in. Yes, uh, we're okay for time. I was going to say um, thank you to Shamir and Julie for leaving some kind of follow up comments for Google. I wanted to make sure too that Rich and Joanne, if you had it any had anything you wanted to add about pers having personnel and just kind of like the, the journey with CBOs, I wanted to give you a chance to kind of um, answer that too. Yeah, we have the same struggles in regards to staffing. Um, everyone has dual roles in order to make these um, programs successful. So it's the same challenges, I think, with a CBO or a university. We all pitch in to do the right thing, to, to work with each other. So. Um, I feel I feel you guys. I know how, how it is. I mean, everyone wears various hats within the organization, and um, you know it's the same situation. All right, thank you so much. So now we have um, our next CBO is Pui Tech, and Walt Schoenfuss is traveling out of the country right now, and he offered to do. A recording for us. So he's the one who coined the phrase I capable and now he tried to top that as you see I was so glad that this is the, the screenshot that came up when I posted the YouTube video. Um, he tried to top that in his recording so I'm going to play a little bit of that um, now as well so hopefully this goes smoothly. Hi everyone I'm Walt Chain Foods from the Poitech Center in Chicago's Chinatown. And uh, I hope you're celebrating the return of Toys R Us like I am. And you can see that I'm proposing maybe a new logo for our uh, ICAPS program here in Illinois. I don't know if it's going to fly or not. But anyway, I'm here to talk to you about uh, our ICAPS Model 2 uh, program that we uh, have at uh, Poitok. Let me get a little, little bit of background. In the Chinatown area, 
up to 30% of the people who are employed work in a restaurant. That's a much higher number than the average in the city of Chicago in general, which I think is something like 4% or so. Uh, anyway, um, most of those restaurants, the managers or the assistant managers don't have any training in it. They want, they had the idea of starting a restaurant, but, but uh, and maybe they had a restaurant when they were living in China, but, you know, starting a restaurant here in America is a very different animal. Uh, as a result, uh, you can see constantly in Chicago, the opening and unfortunately the closing of many restaurants, not just during the pandemic, but pre-pandemic and even now, there's always restaurants opening and closing. Well, we, we saw that as a, as a need for our community to provide uh, managerial training for those people who are running restaurants, uh, those people who want to start a restaurant so that they would know uh, what is involved, what it takes to start and, and manage a restaurant here in the city of Chicago. So uh, in addition to that, um, even though uh, a restaurant manager certificate is not required uh, to open a restaurant, it is required uh, if you are going to be involved in food service at a nursing home that receives Medicaid or Medicare payments. So um, where did we start from? Well, we already had a vocational class in place, a uh, food service sanitation class. And that was where we first got the idea of, of kind of branching out into other areas. Uh, this uh, relation, th this sanitation class has already created partnerships and relationships with many of the local restaurants in the Chinatown area. We also had a kind of an informal relationship with uh, the Chinese American Service League, uh, also known as CASEL. They have a, a, a very well thought of uh, chef training program uh, that uh, teaches students how to do basically Western or European style cooking. As part of their training, they would send their students to us so that we could give them the sanitation class. In return, we would, re we would allow them to recruit our students to become part of the chef training program. So that's where we started with our partnerships with restaurants and our partnership with Castle. Um, the idea was to build on those relationships. And we had a couple of false starts, um, but actually the idea for a restaurant uh, food service manager program came from these partnerships where, uh, for example, the people at Castle were saying, one of the things their students are looking for is they want to have manage, managerial training. And so, they threw it back in our direction to see if we could develop something. So that's what we did. And in, in that, uh, as we worked things out, we became uh, connected with an organization called the International Food Service Executive Association. That organization that's over 100 years old, uh, they uh, have been uh, providing training in uh, managerial skills for restaurants and for food service in general. And so we have been partnering with them. We have a, an MOU with them so that we can use their material and they can use whatever material that we develop uh, as well. And so they are the, uh, the organization that we're working with in addition to continuing to work with restaurants in the Chinatown area. So what is our ICAPS program? Our ICAPS program is called the Food Service Slash Restaurant Manager Certificate Program. It's a model to uh, ICAPS program. Uh, the class is a 14 week class. It meets four days a week, two hours each of those days. The first three uh, days of the week, uh, Monday through Wednesday, uh, is uh, contextualized ESL teaching taught by one of our ESL teachers. We focus on the, um, you know, the language of food service. We focus on the grammar and, and many of the common phrases. 
uh, of Fusser, but also the language and grammar and phrases of managerial uh, work. Um, the ESL instructor collaborates with our vocational instructor to, to make sure that uh, when a particular vocational subject is going to come up on the Thursday class, the Monday through Wednesday class will provide the students with the English that they need to be ready for that discussion. Uh, and again, that has to do with uh, pertinent vocabulary, grammar, conversation practice, and so on. The fourth day, uh, as I've already indicated, is the vocational training day. Uh, and that takes place with our, our certified trainer. The ESL teacher is also present, uh, making connections, uh, helping the students uh, remember the vocabulary that they were taught earlier in the week. Uh, and then just is uh, serving there as a, as a reef source. Um, the vocational, uh, training that we offer offers all aspects of managing food service program, whether it's in a nursing home, a hospital, a restaurant, school cafeteria, and the like. We talk about setting menus, keeping stock and in inventory, setting prices, hiring and managing employees, uh, sanitation, uh, taxes, workers' rights, and, and so on. Uh, in addition, uh, the students are given advice on how to start their own business. Uh, our teacher, our vocational trainer, uh, has experience in the fact that he has started and run two successful restaurants uh, during the course of his long career. In addition to the ESL instructor and the vocational trainer, our transitions coordinator uh, also works with the students uh, individually as well as collectively as a group. Uh, the job of the ESL uh, transitions coordinator is to make connections between the students and possible jobs uh, and that or, or, or possible uh, types of employment. So the, they maintain contact and connections with the restaurants, with the food service industry, uh, in the Chicago, in the Chinatown, uh, greater Chinatown area. And then the coordinator uh, helps them take the next step after they get their certificate. At the end of the 14 weeks, the uh, students take a, a 150 question test that has been developed uh, by the uh, International Food Service Executive Association. And uh, if they get a certain uh, uh, percentage correct, then they uh, qualify to get the certification. Uh, and the certification obviously is something that we need to provide, but what's more important is that it indicates that they understood and hopefully they'll take what they have learned and put it into practice in their uh, restaurants or wherever they're working. Um, the question is asked, what programmatic uh, pieces did we have to adjust to fulfill? Well, this is our first ICAP, so the adjustments had to do with uh, fulfilling the requirements. Uh, we, we have then worked with existing partners and programs uh, to develop our program, but we had not done the, the teamwork model before. And so uh, that was uh, a new thing for us, the, having the ESL teacher and the vocational trainer work hand in hand uh, in making this. Uh, the material that is provided uh, to us by the International uh, Food Service Executive uh, Association needs to be adapted. We are a primarily Chinese speaking uh, student body, or have a primarily Chinese speaking student body. So we have to be ready to explain the different parts to the students uh, in a way that they will understand. So we have, uh, with the permission of uh, IFSIA, that's what we call them, uh, we have been adapting the material and getting it ready uh, for, for us to roll out the package, uh, which is slated for some time uh, after the first of the year, hopefully January 1st, but the latest is March 1st. Um, 
our plans for the future obviously involve analyzing what we're doing uh, in real time, making adjustments in real time. And then after the 14 weeks are over and we see uh, and, and we hear from our students and we see what success rate they have, then we'll make further adjustments. It might be that 14 weeks is too long. Uh, 14 weeks is not long enough. Uh, maybe we need to um, lengthen certain things, shorten other things, to change the material that we're using uh, for the ESL portion, uh, or change some of the material that we're using for the vocational training. Lastly, uh, advice that I would give uh, to uh, other people who want to uh, leverage their existing partnerships uh, to grow. First of all, identify what those partnerships are uh, and or identify what potential partnerships there might be um, and work with those partnerships to assess the needs of the community and to develop accordingly. We developed this program because our partner said there was a need and because we had seen the need, uh, at least anecdotally, uh, through what our uh, students in our sanitation class were saying. Many of our sanitation class people are restaurant owners or they're restaurant managers. So they were saying, this, these are the problems we face. We don't have the tools to deal with them. And so in response to their needs, and the suggestions of a partner, um, that's how we develop this. Um, think outside the box. Uh, the end result uh, of our current ICAPS was not where we started from. We had a very different idea of what we were going to do in partnership with, with another organization. But in consulting with them, we found out that our idea didn't match their ideas. It wasn't going to work. And so we had to go in a different direction. And if this doesn't work, uh, we will go back to the drawing board again and try to find things that do work. Finally, uh, and maybe even above all of this, uh, work with the resource people that are available through ICCB, uh, especially that dynamic duel of uh, Tara and Sarah. Uh, they were... Uh, uh, it, it was immeasurable the amount of help they gave to me and to our uh, ASL transitions coordinator in the planning stages of this uh, and getting walking us through the process and getting us to the point where our ICAPS uh, proposal was accepted. I hope that uh, helps you a little bit know uh, what we as a CBO have done. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, my, uh, you can always contact me at the Poitech Center, uh, and I, I'm, I'm sure that information will be provided somewhere during this, uh, this project. Sorry I couldn't be with you uh, in person. I am, uh, when you're watching this, I will be in South Africa, and so I don't uh, think I'll be able to get, uh, uh, get online at the right time to, to drop in on this, but if I do, who knows? Anyway, have a great uh, uh, Transitions Academy, and remember, ICAPs are us. Thank you. I love the ICAPs are us. So, and thank you, Mary, uh, and everyone. Um, thank you so much to our presenters. Here's the thing. We have a few minutes. Oh, I put my email here in the chat because I know Walt can't really answer questions right now, but I'm happy to connect you to Walt if you have any questions for him. But we have just a couple minutes left. If you have come up with any questions for our other amazing presenters, they have such a passion and a great perspective on different ways to build up their ICAPS I your and their ICAPS IET. So if you have any questions here in the last couple minutes, if you want to throw it in the chat or unmute yourself. Do you see that, George and Andrew? What partnerships have you explored concerning the Clean Energy Bridge and ICAPS? Additionally, what, uh, not much so far, Alex. Um, that That's just getting off the ground. Um, I don't know if we've identified any uh, specific- Nothing specific official yet. Yeah. Nothing uh, additionally, yet. what clean energy projects have you been looking at? Um, uh, the electric vehicle manufacturing, uh, Alex, was our, um, we, 
we would love to do something in uh, renewable energies, but specifically in automotive to sort of combine those two industries. Um, and in fact, that's also IT too, as we always say, like um, uh, automotive is as much computing as anything else these days. And so there's 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 definitely some overlap uh, uh, potential there. So uh, in terms of the clean energy products, um, I would say those three, I mean, any of those three would be, we would definitely be interested in doing, but the electric vehicle manufacturing um, uh, battery technology, uh, things like that. It's just, it's just a matter of identifying, uh, potential partners, contacting them and, 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 and moving forward from there. Uh, but the, yeah, the, in terms of the clean energy bridge and ICAPS, um, that's of the three that we we're definitely doing moving forward with the IT. Um, we definitely also want to do the entrepreneurial one because we have so many existing clients who are small business owners and, and need that kind of, you know, uh, practical support. So this is our most sort of kind of like speculative or, you know, maybe we'll do it, but it's, it is something that we want to do. And obviously uh, there's, there is, and is going to be even more, you know, jobs um, and, and demand in those, in those areas, you know, down the line. So thank you for your question. And love to continue the conversation uh, afterwards. Yeah. I just want to say we're we've got a, we've got a few DMS um, in, in the chat. And so we're, we're writing down the emails and we'll be in touch with you guys and we'll have, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be in touch and we'll, we'll uh, chat some more about this. Absolutely. And thank you to all our presenters for sharing today. Thank you to all of our attendees for joining us at the 2022 Transitions Academy Fall Convening.